Why do you do it? Why do you get up early at the weekends and head up mountains? Anyway, it's a question I often get asked and on today's video and on this adventure I was really hoping that those reasons were all going to become apparent and I was going to be experiencing a grand day in the mountains. It started early and the alarm woke me up at 2am and by 2.30 I was on the road and even the owls were out, it was that early. Oh man, well I tell you, it's early, I'm wondering what the hell I'm doing, I should be in my bed, <laughs> it's uh, 4.20 at the moment, I'd love to say I was up at the crack of dawn but it's not even the crack of dawn yet, <laughs> anyway the objective today is to get to the top of a mountain for sunrise, if there's a sunrise and the reason I'm up so early will become apparent, hopefully, fingers crossed later on, but for the moment I need to get my bag packed get the head torch on and start walking up into the, hopefully into the daylight as uh, as the clock ticks on so I can't really hang around too long or I'll not be making it to the top for sunrise it's, I was cutting it fine anyway but anyway let's see, let's get this bag packed and uh, get out there So I got the bag packed and set off away from the car and up the hill and I was soon making my way into the darkness it was pitch black Let's ah. turn this off this night so I don't blind you. Right, so what time are we at now? It's about uh, 20 past 5, so I've been going for a wee while. And this is a steep, <laughs> steep pool straight from the, uh, the roadside right up this mountain. Anyway, the reason that I've got up so early to try and get to the top of this mountain for sunrise is the forecast. The forecast, well, for, for the last few days has been suggesting inversion conditions this morning. And, yeah, it's, something that it's really hard to predict. The amount of times I've come out early in the morning to try and get above the cloud and it's just not happened. I've been in the mist the whole ways. <laughs> yeah, too many to count, but hopefully today we shall see. Unfortunately, I can see quite a few stars in the sky above me at the moment, which usually would be a good sign. Nice, clear, clear skies, but what I'm wanting is cloud, no stars then to pop out of the cloud, but at the moment that's not looking like the likely scenario but we'll see, the cloud might come in, it's rolling in from the east and uh, with any with any hope it'll be cloudy up there and then I'll get through the cloud to nice blue skies and be walking across it but uh, anyway, I'm just using this as an excuse to stop really, <laughs> catch my breath but I do need to, I need to progress so let's go oh. It's a steep old pool up this mountain and with those skies being relatively clear above me unfortunately it also meant the temperature was yeah, it was dropping, it was, it was getting a bit cold so I stopped to get my jacket on and, and my beanie hat I was still, I still had some hope that I might get that inversion but at the moment it was far too clear but you know what, even without the, the clouds getting on top of the mountain and, and enjoying the sunrise is just fantastic so I wasn't too despondent Anyway, a winter woolies on and I set off getting a bit higher up the hill.
The stars were still sparkling above me, but within a short period of time the weather changed and with it being dark I hadn't seen the, the incoming weather and the cloud enveloped me. And I tell you what, the, uh, the atmosphere around me just changed dramatically. Strange what a wee bit of mist and murk does to the, the brain and the thoughts that run through your head in the dark on the side of a Scottish mountain. Ah, right. Hopefully you can see me. I'll just turn this uh, head torch off. Oh, well, I don't know if you can tell from behind me. <laughs> I don't know what will be picked up on the camera, but I've got a light illuminating me, uh, so you can see me, funnily enough, on top of the uh, on top of the camera at the moment. And it's just casting my shadow, a bit like a broken spectre would um, behind me. So, if you can see that, I don't know if I can move out of the way and you can make out my shadow, who knows. Anyway, <laughs> the good news is, about 20 minutes ago, I'm now, I've been on the go for over two hours now, and about 20 minutes ago the stars disappeared, and I walked into the cloud, or the clouds rolled in, as you can see, it's very murky, and I tell you what, the atmosphere changed, it's just the, I think it's just the human psyche, I don't know, there's just something about in the, the dark and the mist, but as soon as the mist rolled in, I started to get a bit spooked, <laughs> started thinking I was hearing things, and uh, it, was, it was a sheep, or it was a ram, was stood up uh, on a rock looking down at me. I could, I could have sworn it was the devil himself. <laughs> it was, there was eyes illuminated by the head torch, but uh, no, it wasn't. Oh, another noise, I think that's an aeroplane. No. <laughs> there you are. It's a bit spooky up here. Anyway, what time are we at now? Uh, it's after half six. And uh, yeah, things are looking promising. Only if... This cloud remains and I can get above it, but a wee while ago I started to see the stars again. Whether that was me starting to get out of the, the cloud layer or whether it was just drifting by, I don't know. Time will tell, but I've still got a bit of a push. I've got about 400 metres to go, I think. 300, 400 metres to go until I reach the top. So let's see if I can get up there for the sun coming up. Right, let's crack on. Let's get this torch back on. Wow, look at that. Right, let's go. I'd been right and I, I did indeed see some stars above me and all of a sudden I was out of the cloud and the stars were sparkling above me. I was hoping that when I turned round there'd be a nice layer of cloud beneath me. So despite my doubts about the forecast being wrong, it turned out to be spot on. And as I reached the summit of this mountain, I was experiencing what most hill walkers dream of. A perfect inversion, walking above the clouds. And to add to it, I'd also made it up to the top with plenty of time to spare. It was absolutely fabulous. It doesn't get much better than this. The only thing was though, you can probably hear that wind in the background. It was blooming cold, so after touching the trig point at the summit, I knew of a little hidey hole where I could go round, shelter and heat up for a while. Oh, oh turn this off. I can find it. Right, I'm at the summit and I'm the hill I'm up. It's called Ben Moore and I've been up here before, in fact, the last time I was up here was with Jerry and we were, we probably did a bit to camera here, I think he called it the uh, Ben Moore Hilton. <laughs> this wee, this wee, uh, it's not a house, but it's a wee bit of shelter, the summit triggers on a big rock just up there and I tell you what, there's a wee breeze, it's a cold breeze, my hands are freezing, so I've, uh, I've come, come round here to shelter uh, underneath the cairn and, 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 and try and warm up because I'm going to go out there in a minute. It's just a lovely orange glow across the horizon at the moment, so I'm going to go out and watch the sunrise, hopefully not get too cold. 
Anyway, I was going to go in and talk a wee bit why I chose Ben Moore. As I said before, um, the forecast was for an inversion and that's what we've got. Luckily enough, it's been it's, it's just fantastic out there. I shall take you out in a minute. And um, anyway, many times when there has been forecast inversions, I've gone up hills and I've just kind of chosen the hills I hadn't been up before, you know, normal Monroe's and stuff like that. And the ones that aren't as high as, you know, this is, this is one of the highest mountains in Scotland. And uh, if you go up the lower hills, sometimes with an inversion, you get to the top and you're still in the cloud and you can look above you and you can actually see the blue sky and you think, God, if I was only 100, 200 metres higher, I'd be above the cloud. So when I saw the inversion forecast, I wanted to come up a high hill and usually I do Ben Lors because you, you start quite high up there from the car park and it's not too difficult. But I don't know, I just chose Ben Moore today. It's a bit more of a hike, it's about 1,000 metres to the top from the car. The height of this hill is about 1,200. 1200 meters, maybe 1170 something meters, so it's, it's fairly high and I can certainly see a lot of the, the other hills like Ben Vorlick and Stuka Croyne, you, you can't see the tops of those, it's really just the, the higher hills, so yeah, fantastic. Yeah, my hands are warming up now, so I'm going to go out and uh, maybe take some time lapses and, and just watch the sunrise, so let's, let's go and do that. Right, let's go. So with about wow. 15 or 20 minutes to go until sunrise, I headed out of the wee shelter and onto the top to watch the sun coming out and just marvel at those views with that almost perfect inversion. It was just one of those moments that I won't forget for a long, long time. Absolutely brilliant. This is exactly what I was hoping for. The uh, the sun is now up, as you can probably tell. I've actually got the camera sitting on the trig point. This magnificent view of the uh, of the inversion behind me. I think uh, this hill over here called Ben Louis, and then the hills over to the north, and the memoirs you can see and Ben Nevis. It's just absolutely stunning. Was it worth getting up at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night? It bloody was, I tell you, excuse the language, but <laughs> absolutely, but I didn't think, at one point I didn't think this was going to happen, I, I think I said earlier on, I could see the stars and there wasn't any cloud, but um, it's all worked out perfectly, there's a perfect layer of cloud, it really is just the highest peaks that are poking out, uh, I can see uh, Crook Ardrain over there, Bench Lake isn't even in the, uh, can't even see it, it's covered by cloud at the moment, Stabinions, free of cloud, but yeah, just absolutely perfect. So I'm going to sit up here for a bit longer. I think I've been up here for about an hour so far. And uh, yeah, then I'm going to head back down because it is a bit cold. The uh, the temperature was forecast to be about minus one in the tops. 
and there's a fair bit of wind actually, so the uh, the wind chills uh, adding to that. But yeah, it's not uh, it's not and it's not affecting my uh, enjoyment of this magnificent view. Absolutely brilliant. So yeah, a few more photographs, then I'll get packed up and head back down to the car. Wow. With the sun now up, I spent a wee bit more time on the summit, just enjoying those and those views of the inversion and those shark fins of ridges and mountains poking up out of the cloud. It was brilliant. But before long, it was time to saddle the backpack and start heading back down the hill. I still had to get home and earn some brownie points. a bit lazy, I'm not putting my microphone in or anything, just using my action camera. I'm almost back into the clouds now, I don't know if you can make over my shoulder, Ben Louis still there. The clouds rising around the side of Ben Moore, it's been fantastic, absolutely fantastic, just just what just what I was after. So we'll, we'll see how some of the footage has come out, uh, it was a bit of a trek up in the dark. <laughs> in fact, if, if you like the dark, walk or walking in the night and you want to read more about it, read Alan Rowan's Munro Moonwalker books. Absolutely fantastic and very, very funny stories he's got. I can recommend them. Probably my favourite hill walking book is his uh, Monroe Moonwalker series. So give him a go. Anyway, look at this. Uh, just one last piece to camera. We wave to Ben Lee and then back down into the mist and back home. What time are we at? It's just about what, before 9, 39 ish. So I'll get home nice and early, earn some brownie points, and then lose some brownie points because I'll probably go straight to my bed. Right, we're going to end the video here. As always, stay safe out there, guys. Until the next time, see you next time.